Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I'm going to look at a very practical application of differentiation. So this is looking at real life examples of when you want to optimize something. So that's finding a maximum or a minimum of a value. All you need to know in preparation for this video is a bit of differentiation and I have another video on the basics if you need to brush up. Otherwise do grab a pen and paper and join in, pause the video and do the work yourself. Rewind and fast forward as you need to work at your pace. I'm going to work through three examples today, all exam style questions. So let me know how you get on or if this is helpful in the comments below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you want to get in touch about online tuition, small group masterclasses or anything else that I can help you with, I'd love to hear from you, um, starfishmaths at gmail.com or Instagram or the web website. Great, if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, here we have our first problem. So uh, we have a cuboid here um, that's made out of 500 centimeters squared of wood um, and we want to find the maximum volume. Now any question that's asking for a maximum or a minimum is about differentiation and that's one of the really powerful applications of differentiation because if you take a graph of a function um, and uh, differentiate it and set it equal to zero, then you're finding where the gradient is zero and that's always at these maximum and minimum points. So when you differentiate the algebra and set it equal to zero to solve, you find where those maximum and minimum are. So we need to get some algebra going here in this question. First of all, we're given some information here. We know um, that uh, the surface area is 500 centimeters squared, so we can set up a little equation for the surface area. So in this cuboid, we've got a square face, and um, one at the front and the back, so we'll have two of those, 2x squared, and we'll have four rectangles around the outside with dimension x, y, and that's going to total 500. Now in these kinds of questions, you'll always be given some information so you can set up something, but then what you're trying to maximise or minimise will be a different function, so we want volume. So let's find volume now volume here would be x squared times y and that's what we're going to differentiate. The problem is we've got two variables um, and we only want one variable to differentiate otherwise it's much more complicated. So we can use this first equation to make y the subject and then substitute that into this one here. So do have a go at rearranging this to make y the subject. You can do a bit of cancelling here, you could cancel by a factor of 2 if you wanted to and then we can substitute that in here, replace y with all of that stuff. Okay, so we're x squared times all of that, that will cancel an x on the bottom with the squared and just playing with the algebra I'm going to separate these into two bits, so 250 over 2 is 125 uh, with your x on the outside um, and then we've got a half and that will be x cubed. I've done that in one step, if you need to take that more slowly do. Um, I've multiplied out the x with that top bracket and also um, split the fraction into two pieces. So now we've got our algebraic expression for v and this is the thing that we want to maximise, so this is the thing that we're going to differentiate. So have a go at differentiating that. When you differentiate you'll have dv because it's v on the top um, and you're differentiating with respect to the variable x so that's going to be on the bottom. Do you have a go? Pause the video. Great and as I mentioned earlier the whole point, the reason why you're differentiating is to set that equal to zero to find those turning points on the graph. This graph here, um, if you've looked at quadratic graphs it's a quadratic and it's a negative quadratic, so it's going to have that kind of shape to it. Um, so just that knowledge alone is enough to know that we're finding a maximum, clearly. So when the gradient is zero, it's a maximum. So let's set that equal to zero and solve. I'm going to have to make some more space. Okay, so um, bringing that 3 over 2 onto that side, dividing by it, or multiplying by 2 and dividing by 3. So then when you square root that you'll get your x and um, when you square root anything always remember you get plus or minus 
But um, in this case, because it's an application, we're, we've, we're not in pure maths, we're in applied maths now. Um, so because we're looking at lengths, it makes no sense to have a negative length. So we, can, we only need to consider the case where that root is positive. Putting that into the calculator then, um, just to three significant figures, it's 9.13 centimetres. And I've rubbed the equation out that linked x to y, but if you still have that and want to substitute that in to find y as well, then you can get the dimensions of the box. It turns out that if you do that, y is also 9.13. That might be um, intuitive or obvious to you, that you get the maximum volume of this when y is the same as x, when they're all equal. But there we go, that's the way that you can prove it. <laughs> Okay, so we found the dimensions of the box and we can also find then the volume. The volume would be, well, it would be 9.13 cubed, um, which gives you, I think it's 761 centimetres cubed. Now, I mentioned earlier that um, we knew what the graph looked like because it was a negative quadratic, so it was an upside down parabola. So we knew from looking at that graph that it's a maximum, and that's that's fine, um, that's a good argument to say that it's definitely a maximum, but not always will you have a function that you know what the graph looks like. So there's another way that you need to know um, to prove that this thing is a maximum and not a minimum. Um, and I mentioned this in my differentiation video, if you need to take, it, if you need to take a peek at that, um, to show that a value gives you a maximum or a minimum, you take the second derivative. We need to differentiate the dv by dx again. So just by magic, this has reappeared. Let's uh, differentiate that again to get the second derivative. That's d2v by dx squared. Um, and the 1, 2, 5 will vanish. We'll get minus 3x. So you can see if you put your value of x in here, uh, 9.13, then you'll get a negative value. And if it's negative, that means it's a maximum. So a negative value is a maximum, a positive value is a minimum. So that's the way you can prove it's definitely a maximum. Okay, here we've got a second question. I've taken this from a past paper. I think it's an, uh, an old Excel paper. And just to um, encourage you, the exam question actually guides you through step by step. It's got a part A, part B, part C to ask you to do like little bits to guide you through this a bit. I'm just putting it all out there <laughs> um, just to do the whole thing together. But when you're on your own, you will be guided through a little bit more. Um, for example, it will uh, give you a show that question. So show that to get your algebraic expression to begin with. And then even if you can't manage to do that, you can at least do the rest of the question and carry on by differentiating. So let's take a look. This is about, um, some. this is my best drawing of a tablet, um, a company's manufacturing. The volume is 60 cubic millimetres and they want to minimise the surface area. So we need to make an equation for the volume. The volume of a cylinder is the area of the circle times by the h. So we've got a pi times r radius, which is x. x squared times by h is the volume, and we know that's 60. And now surface area. The surface area, you might know the formula for this off by heart, but if not, that's fine. Don't worry, we can work it out. We've got the area of the circle at the top and the area of the circle at the bottom, so that's two lots of pi x squared. And then we're also adding on the area of the band that goes around the outside. So if you take the band of a cylinder and flatten it out, it would be a long strip rectangle where H is kind of like your width of the rectangle and the length of it would be the circumference of that circle. Can you see that? So um, the circumference would be 2 pi times the radius, which is X, and then we're timesing it by the H. So that's the surface area of the tablet, and I'll call that A. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the, the past paper that this came from guided you through by asking you to derive the formula for the surface area without the H in. So it's kind of guiding you where you want to go. 
Um, but it's the same process for all these questions, really. We've still got two variables like we had in the last question. Two variables is a bit problematic, so we want to get rid of the h if we can, which we can, because we've got another equation here. So we're going to rearrange to make h the subject and then substitute it back into this one. So have a go at that. OK, then you can substitute that in for the h, have a go. We can do some simplifying here. We've got a pi on the top, a pi on the bottom, so they can vanish very happily. This x can vanish and take off a squared of that one. I'll simplify that a little bit. I hope you can see this blue pen OK, I'm not sure about it. I'm going to write the x that's on the bottom, I'm going to write uh, as a power of minus 1 just because it's easier to differentiate because as you know the next step is to differentiate. So this time we've got dA by dx. So have a go at that. Uh, when you differentiate and you've got something like pi, pi is just a number not a variable so just treat it as a number, ignore it, just bring it, bring that power down to the front it just it carries on sitting there. Great, and we're setting that equal to zero and solving. This time because we're solving I'm going to put that power back down to the bottom. We can multiply that up to that side and bring 4 pi down. So x is the cubic root of well, it would be 30 over pi, just by simplifying that 120 over 4. But in any case, you can pop that into your calculator. And I get 2.12, again, just, just three significant figures. Um, I think that's millimetres, isn't it? Teeny tiny tablets. Um, if we want the minimum surface area, then we can put that back into our expression for the surface area. Which again, I've rubbed out, but <laughs> hopefully you've written it down. Um, putting that back in, I get 84.8 cubic millimetres, so that's the minimum surface area. And again, a good final step is to, and you'll be guided through it of course, um, prove that it's definitely a minimum. So we're going to take the second derivative and cross our fingers and hope for the best. I've left the derivative here this time, <laughs> so we can differentiate that again. Again, um, just treating that pi as the number, so we'll drop the variable to get 4 pi. That x to, Q to the minus 3 doesn't give you a negative, remember, it just drops the x down to the bottom. So this is a positive expression, and when you put in a positive value, you can see you're going to get um, a positive answer. You know, if you've got more space than me, it's good to actually do that to show that you're substituting that in to get a positive answer. Positive, so it's definitely a minimum. Well done if you're getting this. We'll look at one more question. Okay, last question is about a cake box, which is a bit more happy. Um, and it's the same process as ever. We're given a volume, we're asked to minimise the surface area, so we can make a equation for the volume and also an expression for the surface area and differentiate it and so on. Very similar, do have a go. Um, this time we've got a shape that involves a sector of a circle, so hopefully um, you're aware of um, sector work with radians. So the volume is going to be um, the area of that sector which is a half r squared theta, um, r is r, and theta is 1, so we don't even need to write it in, which is great, so it's just a half r squared here. Um, so that area, and then times by the h, that's going to be our volume, and we know that that's 300 here. Then we'll make our equation for the, or expression for the area, surface area, so uh, we've got area of the sector on the top and the bottom, so two of those. Um, and the area, again, is a half r squared. Um, and then we're adding on. We've got a rectangle here and on the other side as well. So that will be r times h. We've got two of those. And then we've got the area, that curved bit round the back of the box. So um, that'll be h times 
because if you flatten it, it'll be a rectangle. Um, so it'll be h times the length, this curved length here. That is the arc length, which in a sector will be just r times the angle, r theta, r times 1, which is just r. So we've got r, so that will be that length there. And then we're timesing by the h to get that um, area of that rectangle at the back. So r times h. So that's the um, area. That really can simplify, can't it? Let's just clear that up. And we've got two variables, as usual. Um, let's get rid of the h. Um, we can rearrange this to make h the subject. Again, we can cancel an R with an R. And I'm going to write the R to the minus 1 again. And here we go, let's differentiate. And we'll set that equal to 0. So R will be cube root of 900, which is 9.65. Okay, putting that value of r back into the expression for a, which I've left on this time, I'm just cramming it all into the end of the board, um, I get that a is 280 centimetres squared. And to prove that it's the minimum, definitely, we can take the second derivative, which is going to be something like that which is going to be a positive value when you put in your value of r. So that's positive, which means it's definitely a minimum. Brilliant! Well done if you're getting that. Um, keep practicing plenty of examples. I hope that was helpful today. Thank you for watching and have fun!